to, to the church. How much time? Uh, with my pay. And uh, if I'm just giving the tithe according to my pay, how much more could I give? And what are the activities that I've written? So I started writing down uh, in my notebook today. And I thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit leading me to do that. I have my grandchildren and they have their future and I cannot, I don't even know what their future holds for them. I don't even know what the ending of their school is for this year. I don't even know what is waiting for them next year. I feel responsible. I feel accountable. So I'm asking myself this morning, how much activator have I done for my grandchildren? I need to do those activators because I teach them, I can see the envelopes for their time, they are typing. But to take them to another level is activator. To take them to another level, to take you to another level, it's your, it's your activators or offering uh, in the uh, you know, biblical term. It's your offering. And, and I know like when we talk about these things, people say, okay, there it goes again. You know, we want the goodness, but we don't want to hear it. But that commitment, no one will force you. It's you. It comes from you. So for me, my take, because I'm looking through my books and I'm saying to myself, uh, 2024 is coming to an end. It's just like a, a month away. I need to better my time that goes to the church. I need to better my activator and to, you know, uh, really um, outline what I want uh, for each of my grandchild uh, and write their name and specifically come before God on it. I'm giving my time, but I need to activate and the volume that I activate is what I want them to achieve or the design feature that they have. And then I have my children. Even though they have their own families, they've moved on. They have their own families. But I still feel responsible for my children. I feel responsible for their spouse. And all those things, because I have the ability to be able to, you know, to be part of their lives. So whatever that you're going through, always remember that this God... Um, that you know, he surrounds you uh, with his anointing and his grace, and he convicts you. For me, the conviction of the Holy Spirit was for me today to correct my ways, uh, to look back and redo what I'm doing. Um, if this year is just calling, you know, the little things that is coming our way as a family, then if I anticipate for something greater, then I need to review the things that I'm doing. I need to review my type. And then takes me back. When I received my uh, effing pair, when I was 50, I'm 58. When I was 55, you know, the thoughts that I was having this morning, I'm going to talk about effing pair and I'm going to talk about the climate. I'm going to talk about the effing pair and I'm going to talk about the and do they cut in the Suleva Nalotu? And did on me was Savior Tonu Lubengu, or the Kavana Kavino Nabatono Makumbungu, a Tarija Telenalo Tabuniko. How did I manage my FNP money? How did I manage uh, this funding? How did I manage these finances? Because everything that comes through my hands, I am accountable to the great God who is who he yeah. is. And I cannot continue to stand before God and asking him for goodness, asking him for greatness uh, in my grandchildren, my family, when I don't even set the condition. So today was a conviction for me uh, to go and review my condition uh, for God to be able to look my way and hear me. I know he listens to my prayer. I know he has done too many great things, but I want to better it. I want to go to another level. I want to take my family to another level. I want my grandchildren to feel and to know the goodness of worshiping God. I want them to see the goodness of worshiping God. I want my children and their family for them to know when I die or when I, you know, I'm erased from this world, I want them to always take that legacy that it can happen, it can be done, that he can love his God so crazy and he can, you know, miraculously bring about the things that your mind cannot even fathom. So I want to challenge you wherever you are at, whatever that you're going through right now. If you're wanting things with God, remember it comes with a condition. And I'm really enjoying uh, the moment that I'm having with my grandchildren every night. We're doing a Bible reading, reading the chapter, reading the verses, uh, you know, um, sharing the ideas on their own understanding of the chapter and the parable. And I'm loving those moments because those moments will never come back. So investment is not only money. Investment is not only a wealth. No, investment is the word of God. Investment is a moment with them. Investment is your prayer. Investment is your fasting. Anything that you do that you're going to invest in your children and your family, that the world cannot take away from them. It's going to stay with them. So it's worth the efforts. It's worth the investment because he is the one who's going to open their eyes in Psalms 37, 13, that my eyes shall see 
the goodness of God in the land of the living. Goodness in their exam, goodness in their application for, to go forward for next year, a goodness in their everyday life, goodness in their health, goodness in their future. Whoever that they see, whatever that they do, they will see the goodness in other people because